Hey y'all, this is Blizzard. Um, today I'm going to be showing you guys a little bit more like how to make thumbnails for SFM and to show you guys a little more insight on how we do stuff here. First thing you want to do is obviously make your session. It doesn't really matter where this is and it doesn't really matter what the name of it is. I wouldn't, I don't really change anything in here, so obviously you can just create it. Now, if you're wondering, for example, how I get the second little picture here, I'm going to show you guys in a second. But first thing you want to do before any kind of model adding or anything like that, you want to obviously load your map. Now, you can find the white room actually um, on Lado's channel. There's actually a tutorial, or you can actually just find one in the Steam Workshop. There's a ton of them in there. Uh, you can get one with a green screen. You can get one with a white room. It's personally up to your preference. This is just the background for the actual model itself. But my personal preference is always going to be the white room. I've always been a fan of it. Now, if you're wondering how you get the, uh, the second viewport here, very easy to do. So you can just close out of it now. Easy thing to do. All you do is click secondary viewport. And you're going to get this little uh, window here. All you're going to do is hold and hover over the actual name of it. And you're just going to drag it. And then you're going to come up with these little squares everywhere. Now, you can put it to wherever you want. It's like a personal preference. But I like it to have right here. Here. it's personally the best spot in my opinion and then I usually you know raises up a little bit and you'll see why in a little but um so now you have these two viewports and you can change this to either work camera no camera camera one uh it doesn't really matter really it's up to you um but obviously now we're going to add the model in now what i'm going to be using today is i'm going to be using the renegade raider model you can find a ton of models online there's a ton in the steam workshop and there's easy easy access to them but it's um it's obviously whatever model you want to use i mean it's not a not a big deal. Now, what I'm going to do is zoom in a little bit. If you get a little bit of an FOV problem, usually I usually like to zoom in a little bit to make it look um, obviously better because obviously if you zoom out too much, it kind of looks a little weird. So I use zoom in with my scroll wheel just a little bit. And to move around, you're going to be clicking on the mouse tool to kind of like move. Uh, so you can only move when you're clicking your mouse, uh, like left clicking the screen. And I also like to keep it on this setting. This is the actual edit button right here. And then for up and down it's actually z and x and then for um to move around like this that's just wasd so it's like a, it's like kind of like playing a video game almost so it's pretty easy to do i mean the the basics are pretty self-explanatory now what a lot of people have a problem with when they're making their model is actually making it less stiff and i'm gonna be showing you guys a little bit on how to make it less stiff in a second um so we'll just go ahead and get into it so what i'm gonna be doing today is actually gonna be making a um i'm gonna copy like almost copying a design just to see like it's a design from Fortnite, and it's one of these loading screens. I'm going to show me it on screen. Now, it's basically going to be this, but um, an SFM. So, we're going to be trying that out, and I'm going to show you guys just an easy step-by-step -step process on how I would do this. So, obviously, first, I would go into the um, the unknown section. This is where your eyebrows and your arms sometimes are going to be, your fingers. Um, obviously, any kind of additional things like the helmet, the tags, and everything like that. That's usually where this is going to be. I mean, this is like, you can find it right here. You know, this is all where the settings are. And if you want to do stuff, I recommend right here, if you're wondering why, if it's doing this and it's looking really weird when you carry it up, or if you like, if you're moving, um, like your left eyebrow and all of a sudden it looks really weird like this, usually it's because you're actually on the movement tool instead of the rotation tool. And this is what a lot of people mess on up, mess up on in the future. And this is usually what a lot of people mess up on. So that's just a little bit of a hint here is just to use the rotation tool. Um, but anyway, so what I would do is I would go into the spine. And obviously from this photo, it's going to be more of like this. And then you would move the spine up just about like this and kind of make it because you still want to have the, um, the spine bent a bit. So just like this and then maybe just about like that. So once you got that, um, I think the next thing I would do is go into the arms and you're going to find the clavicles. Now, a lot of people usually just edit the models just like this. And that's obviously an easy way to do it. But it actually looks kind of different and it looks more realistic if you actually use the clavicle at first instead of the use the upper arm so it kind of makes it look just a little bit nicer um and more like non-stiff if that makes sense so obviously i'd move this down just a bit and then probably move it back also and then what we'd actually do is actually go into the legs and i'm actually going to move the thigh out just like this so it looks a little more realistic with this and then this one can come in more like that. So then what we're going to do is I'm going to go into the upper arm regular on the right side. Now, sometimes the models are going to be a little more organized, but this is just personally how um, this model is. I mean, they're all going to be different. Just depends on how you do it. I actually have a porting tutorial on how you can actually get any kind of model you want. Uh, it'll be on my channel itself, but um, just about like this. 
probably maybe a little bit up or about like that and then we can go ahead and start working on the other arm now this arm looks like it's actually holding the pickaxe so we're gonna move the clavicle just a bit it's the wrong arm and also if you want to figure out how to undo it you can either go to the edit and click undo or you can click Control z that also works but obviously hopefully a lot of you guys already know that Now I'm actually going to find the neck here, and I'm going to move it a bit, kind of make it look more realistic. Um, maybe a little more. Now I believe, I don't think they actually used um, Blender or SFM for this picture, so. Just about like that. Now, we're obviously going to have to add in the, the pickaxe. Now we can work on the face in a second, it's going to look a little weird, um, obviously because we haven't touched the face that much. So we're just going to pick up the pickaxe now. So also a big thing, a lot of people ask me um, how come their models don't show up. So if you go into here um, or just any of these, you're going to see error. And you're going to be wondering like, oh, why doesn't this show up? Well, there's a good chance that there's a good chance that the reason that it comes up in error is because you're probably in user mod. Now you can easily click all mods and it'll come up for anything. But um, I personally don't like always doing this. I always either go to user mod, which is anything that comes from outside the Steam Workshop, or you can scroll down and find a workshop, and it'll also come up with anything from inside the workshop. So I'm going to go ahead and look up the Raider Pickaxe. Alright, so now that we have the Raider Renegade Raider Pickaxe, let me just rescan this real quick for it, and we go right here. We can search it up again. No big deal. Kind of have to go through here. Now, here's where it is. Um, you just have to search through here. And it's kind of hard to search, but if you want to just find it, uh, maybe if you want to, you can't find who has what. Easy way to search is you can click right here and filter it and search through here. Uh, it's just kind of like search through all the model or the models that you have in here. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up the Renegade Raider pickaxe now. And we can actually keep our camera one here, but we're going to click work camera. And then we can leave camera one here to kind of see where we're going with this. So I'm going to go ahead and start editing the pickaxe. Now, in the picture... The Renegade Raider pickaxe is actually being held more of like this, or it's tilted this way. So we can go ahead and bring it back a bit, you know, work with it. So I'd probably bring it up a bit like this. I think it's actually just a little big in my opinion. So what we're going to do, an easy way to resize something if it's too big, you go to root transform and you right click it and you want to click add scale to control. So you can actually make it how big you want. I find this very easy and helpful depending on what I'm working with. Sometimes it can be better for certain things. But it looks like it's actually more tilted this way. So I'm going to go in here. But obviously that looks a little big. So we're going to keep adjusting it to our liking. And we will continue. So obviously you have to adjust it to what you like. Because obviously it's, it's your thumbnail. So it's up to you. Kind of just about that and then we can start editing the arm a bit more make it look more realistic actually holding it and stuff like that we can have it just like this kind of adjusting it again this is all a personal preference this is how i want it so this is how i'm gonna get you know have it um but that axe actually we're gonna adjust that just a little more really quickly now with the fingers is a little bit different it's a little weird how the fingers work um you're going to find a lot of these and either they're going to be in the actual finger section here depending on what skin you use or they're going to be in the unknown section which is going to be the majority of the uh, user mod kind of models so we're just going to adjust it how we want it. I'm going to probably keep it like this and then I'll probably keep that thumb a little bit lower so you can just go ahead and edit it just how you want it. It's personally up to you. Uh, this is just how I would do it. Now in the actual picture itself, it looks a little weird, so I'm gonna edit myself. Keep it how I would how I would do it. Now what I want to do is actually mess with the head a little more because obviously it doesn't really look too real, if that makes sense. So what I'm gonna do is kind of mess with it a bit, and I'm gonna actually start editing the face. Now here's where most of uh, face settings are. Now usually what I would do is looking at this model, I'd have it about right here, and I would probably of adjust the eyes now obviously it's kind of hard to see the eyes so i usually zoom in a bit and then i um adjust them from there so maybe like right here 
and obviously it's gonna look weird at first but when you're done with the entire model it'll look a lot different because it's just you know it's not edited yet so you can't really judge it until it's finally done you know and then in there also it looks like she's actually giving that confused looking face kind of like um showed on screen probably she just looks kind of confused and a little bit um just kind of lost so we're gonna like she's like really you know kind of like that so we'll probably just now i'd also probably edit this hand a little more and make it look more realistic um obviously the hand's not even on the actual leg so i would just kind of just make this make these adjustments to my liking so i'm probably gonna move the arm in a little more like this and then we can adjust it from there because obviously now the hand's actually on the arm and it looks just a little more unique it looks a little more what's it called not unique it looks more real um so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna just start editing the fingers a little more now even if they can't always see it it's always better to be put as much attention to detail as possible because even if you, you might see it you might not see it even if you might not see it that doesn't mean that someone else might someone else will you know so i always like to put as much attention to detail in there because there might be spots that you didn't realize and you thought you could hide that other people will notice and that'll look bad for your thumbnails now once you're done with that obviously it's gonna look really it's gonna come out somewhat decent like it, i mean i like it so it looks really nice so what i would do now is probably add a little bit of lighting to it now there's gonna be more lighting actually in photoshop but an easy way to do this, so let's go ahead and I'll show you guys exactly how best way to do lighting. Now, I actually already made a tutorial on my channel on how to really do lighting. But in case you haven't seen that, I'll show you real quick. I like to do more of the lighting, so I put in a new light. And usually, if you have your secondary viewport, or even on the first, you can drag this into here. But I usually drag it into my secondary viewport so I can edit it more, just like this. And I'll usually put, like, one right about in the front, just like this. And I'll edit it down, obviously, to what I like. Probably about right there. Then I add in another one and do the exact same thing. And then maybe make a, a one from the sky, kind of like as if the sun's coming down. Um, it's all up to you, you know, if you like the lighting somewhere else, it's, you know, it's your preference, it's your thumbnail. But this is just what I would do, obviously. Probably right there. And then I make another light. And this one will be for, obviously, the right side. Just like this. And then you turn it up, but just not too much. So you can still see shadow a little bit on the actual pickaxe itself. And then you make one more light just to go in the middle. And this one is just so it gets rid of any darker spots on it. And you can make the vertical go up so it obviously gets the whole body. And then I would just slowly move it down to your, um, to your liking. So right about maybe there. So that's probably what I do for the lighting. Now, obviously, before you render this, is gonna look. It looks really weird right now, and you're probably wondering, you know, why does it look so bad? Well, you have to actually edit the uh, render settings, which are gonna be if you right-click the screen, you'll find the render settings right here. And then when you go into here, usually what I'd like to do is turn off motion blur, and I would put this to 1024. Now, I actually had a good friend, Leto, actually helped me out with this, so this is a big shout out to Leto for the settings. And once you do that, it's obviously gonna look still about the same for that, and. Um, I'd probably just go ahead and then you, you're ready to export. So when you export your models, you're just going to go to your little export button right here in the file, then export, then I go to poster, save, and then I only change the PNG. Now you can change your output file or location to whatever you want, but I usually leave it the same because I'll find show you guys exactly how to find it in a second, but just go ahead and export the poster. And then it'll start exporting on its own. Now let's say real quick you don't know where your model is actually at. And you're trying to find it in your actual file explorer. Really quick way to find it is you're going to go to open up your file explorer. Go to this PC. Go to Windows C. Program files. Scroll all the way down till you find Steam. Now when you do this you're going to go to your Windows C. Program files times 86. Scroll down until you find Steam. Which should be right about here. Click Steam apps. Common. Source Filmmaker, Game, User Mod, Elements, Renders, and here are any of your renders. Now usually you have to change your name of your renders or else they'll actually override it. So that's what I recommend doing for any kind of render in the future. But obviously this is just where you can find your renders. And it'll come out just like this if you followed exactly how I did it. 
Now, it's going to be a white background, obviously, which is going to be really weird because you're probably wondering, oh, how do I fix this? So you have to actually go into Photoshop and cut it out manually, which kind of sucks, but that's just how it does it if you're going to be using a white room. If you're using a green room, a green screen room should be way easier. I mean, obviously, it's going to be green, so it should be easy to cut out, but this is just if you're using a white room.